Yeah, well, there's an enormous amount of research on the effect of sugar. I mean, this is really a big area of research, so there's just thousands of studies that have been done on the effect of sugar on general health, on recovery from injury, and its relationship to degeneration of the brain, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. What they've discovered is even a moderate elevation of sugar is damaging to the brain. And in stroke patients, we know that even moderate elevations of sugar determine your prognosis. If it's slightly elevated, your prognosis is poor. The higher the sugar, the worse your prognosis. And that's because to the brain, the sugar dramatically increases free radical generation, and it produces what we call advanced glycation end products, AGEs, which cause cross-linking to proteins, interfere with the various enzymes, and so the brain can't function properly. One of the really startling things is it dramatically increases inflammation and excitotoxicity in the brain, what I call immunoexcitotoxicity. And that's the major mechanism by which head injuries, strokes, right. any kind of injury to the brain produces its damage. So by raising glucose, you're actually increasing the damage to the brain and reducing uh, the possibility of a good and functional recovery. Well, if you look in the ranking of the sugars, glucose is the least damaging because that's what's naturally used by your body. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sucrose is a little bit more damaging. The worst of all on this scale is high fructose corn syrup. Uh -huh. And what we're looking at, for instance, in, even in cancer research, uh -huh. people who consume the greatest amount of sugar have the highest incidence of cancer. It's quite dramatic. It's something like a 200% increase in wow. uh, the more sugar that you consume. Uh, and the same thing with neurodegenerative brain disorders. People who consume more sugar have more neurodegenerative brain disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And we know why. It's not a big secret. We know that, in fact, that increases free radical generation in all the cells of the body, particularly the brain because of its high metabolism. We know it's producing these AGE complexes, which also dramatically increase free radical generation trigger inflammation in the brain and in the body, which is highly destructive, again connected to cancer, degenerative brain disorders, and cardiovascular disease. So all the major diseases, the major killers, the major croupers uh, in human health are related to high sugar intake. Yeah. So uh, if you're drinking that one, well that does some damage if you're drinking two or three or four or five or a six pack uh, of cola, many people do, yeah. uh, what they've shown is, is in fact the greatest increase in drinking sugar drinks is in people over age 50 or then even the teenagers, their increase really? is, is increased greater than teenagers. So uh, when I go out and I look at restaurants and I, and I see people eating and buying things in stores, I see a lot of elderly people uh, yeah. buying uh, Coca-Colas and right. Well, usually what you find is if you, if you get off of the, the colas completely and just start drinking purified water, uh -huh. uh, filtered water, distilled water, you lose your taste for it. Yes. If you try to go back, it's just like drinking heavy syrup. Yes. You can't stand it. So that helps you get off of it. The other thing is switch to things. If you, if you want something other than just water, you can have a cup of coffee uh -huh. or a couple of cups a day. You can have a white tea, yeah. which has the highest antioxidant level. Uh, it uh, helps prevent cardiovascular disease. It protects the brain. Uh -huh. uh, so it has numerous benefits. It contains chemicals that are powerful anti-cancer agents. Uh -huh. uh, inhibit the growth of cancer. So uh, by switching to things that are just as tasty, jumping out of the pan into the fire. Yeah. Okay. Because you're going from in the pan where it's pretty hot and doing a lot of damage into the actual fire itself. And that's the aspartame, the splenda. Mm -hmm. Now what we know from these agents, particularly the aspartame, there's, there's significant research now to show that it is a major cause of certain cancers like breast cancer, lymphoma, leukemias, oh my uh, brain cancer. So we've got some links to some very bad diseases, and we know why. Because aspartame is broken down into formaldehyde, 
Formaldehyde is a known powerful carcinogen. It attaches to DNA, breaks yeah. the DNA, and that leads to these diseases. It also increases your risk of degenerative brain disorders because it breaks the DNA of brain cells. Mm. Uh, so this is a very bad substance. Uh, and uh, we have enough research now to know that it produces depression, it produces cancer, uh, it may increase suicides. Uh, so that this is not a good choice. Now the Splenda is a uh, chlorinated uh, glucose. When you add a halogen, which is a very reactive element, mm -hmm. to glucose, it becomes carcinogenic. It damages cells. It increases free radical generation. Mm -hmm. So by adding the artificial sweeteners, mm -hmm. you're directly damaging yourself with some very powerful toxins. Plus, you're not getting rid of your sugar cravings. They have a higher content of these uh, neurodegenerative protecting uh, nutrients in it, like your flavonoids and anti-cancer elements in it. Uh, you need to eat healthy plants so that they're, they're not diseased, but the organic is good. You even need to wash organic because some of the atmospheric pesticides will get on it. Uh, you need to drink purified water, uh, avoid fluoride. Don't ever drink fluoridated water, don't use fluoride toothpaste or get fluoride treatments. Mm -hmm. They're extremely brain toxic. They dramatically increase cancer risk and cancer growth. Uh, they have numerous effects in the body, particularly suppressing thyroid function. Uh, so you need to avoid the fluoride. Mercury, for instance, dental amalgam, vaccinations with mercury in it. Uh, you need to make sure that you're not intolerant or allergic to the foods. Uh -huh. uh, it's a good idea at, one, at least one point in your life to, to be tested for various food allergies. Um, Exercise regularly. We know that exercise improves brain function. If, if you have DNA fragility, that is, your DNA is very fragile, or you're born with an inability to repair your DNA, we have certain enzymes that help fix DNA if it's damaged. Some people don't have the enzymes uh, in sufficient quantity to fix that DNA. That's what happens to women with breast cancer, the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 uh, defect. That's a DNA repair molecule. So if they're born with mutated genes, they can't fix their DNA. Now, if you expose that woman to just small amounts of aspartame or small amounts of another carcinogen, she's more likely to get it even if she follows otherwise a healthy lifestyle. Now, the healthy lifestyle helps reduce her risk considerably, which is it's sort of like having uh, a sink that's overflowing and instead of shutting off the water, you just keep calling for more mops. You've got to turn the water on. Yeah. Well, as I tell people, the most important thing is your diet. Yeah. And, and this is what's usually forgotten. People think, well, I'll take this supplement, or I heard on the news about this supplement that protects your brain. If I take that, then I can just eat and do what I want to. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't. Right. Uh, as I gave you the analogy with the sink overflowing, you don't just keep calling for more mops. you got to turn the water off. Uh, well, what we need to do with our diet, we need to get the sugars as low as possible, you know, most of the sugars out of your diet. Eat complex carbohydrates, mm -hmm. eat whole grains, when you're gonna eat some grain, but not a lot of those, but you know, a uh, moderate amount. Need to watch the red meats because red meats are very high uh, in iron. And it's highly absorbable iron. Iron dramatically increases free radical generation, not only in the brain, but the entire body. It's associated with cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, particularly things like Parkinson's disease. There's a high concentration of reactive iron in that part of the brain. So we need to watch our red meat intake. You need to always eat at least five to 10 servings of fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. because that helps bind the iron so you don't absorb it. Uh, and that keeps your iron from being uh, at too high a level. And that's why you eat mixed meals. The types of vegetables matter. They need to be organic. They need to, need to be high nutrient dense vegetables. There's something that's inflamed the nerves themselves. And that's what the key, we discovered a long time ago is if you uh, surgically uh, operate on a patient while they're awake under local anesthesia, you take a nerve and you squeeze it, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. It right. just makes it tingle. 
But if you inflame the nerve and squeeze it, it's extremely... So she's inflamed. Yeah, I get it. Now that could connect her uh, fungus infection uh -huh. uh, to this. So if she's got a, a systemic fungus infection that is producing inflammation throughout her body, uh, and the nerves are inflamed as a consequence, then that slight pressure, particularly when she's standing, because when you stand, it tends to close off that spinal canal, uh, that'd be enough to produce pain. Now, in all neuropathies, all nerve-type pains, what they've discovered is connected to the inflammation. You clear up the inflammation, the pain gets better. So things like curcumin, quercetin, elagic acid, mm -hmm. resveratrol, that reduce inflammation, DHA, uh -huh. uh, tend to improve and heal these nerves. Now you also need to give the nerves all the nutrients they need, right. like the B vitamins, uh, acetyl carnitine uh, helps improve nerves, uh, out lipoic acid. Uh, all of these things will help the, the nerves heal and be less painful. Well, the one I've been most impressed with is berberine. Oh. Uh, berberine is a very powerful antiviral, anti-cancer, uh, anti-inflammatory. It kills fungi, kills uh, num numerous viruses. It's safe to take. You, you, can, ta you can take uh, two uh, capsules of the berberine, uh, which is uh, about 500 milligrams to a gram three times a day. Even if you take it with your medication, so you're on an antifungal, you can take it with the antifungal, it makes it even more effective. You, you get uh, a lot more clearing of this organism. Uh -huh. And you get the anti-inflammatory effect at the same time. Any person who has a chronic infection, chronic inflammation is extremely yeah. low in magnesium. Look A lot of things that cause to be inflamed and some of them we don't really think about. For instance, aging. Uh, just the fact that you get older, you become more inflamed. Yeah. And this is why the uh, Alzheimer's rate jumps from about 15% at age 70 to uh, almost 50% after age 85. Yeah. Because the degree of inflammation jumps tremendously. Uh, exposure to pesticides and herbicides around the house. We find these inflame the brain. Drugnum, which is a very commonly used uh, insecticide, uh, produces inflammation part of the brain that causes Parkinson's disease. And now it's accepted that exposure to pesticides and herbicides is the leading cause of Parkinson's disease. Monosodium glutamate. In fact, exposure to MSG early in life can increase inflammation in the body that lasts decades. A lot of it has to do with your diet. Mm -hmm. And consuming a lot of red meats, getting that iron, that's inflaming you. That's producing free radicals. If you're eating a lot of omega-6 type fats, omega-6 fats are converted into inflammatory chemicals. On these diets, put them on a few supplements and in two weeks, they say, I can't believe, can't believe it. how good I feel.